since uh, uh, there's no long, there's not tape on to continue this uh, story uh, called uh, "Speaking from Sardana," will be continued on another tape, and uh, it's the last story in this book, and it's well, it's a sad story, but I think you'll enjoy it. Hello, this is Bruce Ramsey, the day today. This is Bruce Ramsey. The day today is February 8th, 1991. And the story I'm about to read to you is the last story in my novel called Newton as a Man, which is a depressing novel, but it's one of the better Newton novels. And the story that I'm about to read to you is called Escaping from Sardana. Sardana. Escaping from Sardana. And I'll get to it as soon as I find out where. Just a minute here. Hello, this is Bruce Ramsey. The date today is February 20th, 1991. And the story I'm about to read to you is called Escaping from Sardana. Escaping from Sardana, and it's the last story in my book, Newton as a Man. It's the, I think it's the, well it says the, the 14th, uh, it's, it's, an, it's the 14th Newton novel really, what it, what it is, and uh, it's really one of the better Newton novels that I've written. It's the most uh, human, and uh, I think it's probably the best new novel I've ever written, really. And I'll get to it right now. Just a minute here. Wait a minute, is this thing playing or recording? Wait a minute, what's going on here? Oh, I see. Yes, hello, this is Bruce Ramsey. The day today is February 20th, 1991. And what I'm about to read to you is my I'm about to read to you my last story in the book, my novel, uh, Newton as a Man, 14th Newton novel, and this is um, the story I'm about to read to you is called Escaping from Sardana, which I believe is uh, probably the, one of the better Newton stories that I've written in my life. Okay, Escaping from Sardana, the better Newton books, actually. This story is okay. <clears throat> well, it's now February 22nd, 1989, uh, 1980, <clears throat> and I'm about to read to you Escaping from Sardana, from one of the best Newton novels I've written, called Newton as a Man. Escaping from Sardana, coming up. <sighs> 
The word quickly spread around the planet that Newton had been shot out of the sky by a brave jet pilot. But when the military ransacked Newton's house, they discovered his spaceship in his garage, making everyone wonder. Are you sure you were knocked out by Newton? Asked a reporter to the scientist Newton had knocked unconscious so he could take his clothes and sneak aboard the spaceship. I don't know. I thought that was the man who attacked me, said the man, pointing to a picture of, of Newton. Yep, yeah, uh, said, a, said a scientist pointing at a picture of Newton. As the hours went by into the investigation, the brave pilot, who was believed to have downed the saucer, began to feel guilty, thinking he had attacked something that wasn't Newton. The general who ordered the jets to attack the saucer said, We shot Newton down, all right. The police spotted him on his motorcycle heading toward this coast. They followed him right to it, and that was when I ordered the jets. They got him all right. All right, and, and right now the military is going on a foot, is going on foot through the thick forest to find the downed spacecraft. As the military marched through the forest to find it, Newton woke up in a cold, dark room. He was suffering from cracked ribs and a broken nose. A fire had broken out, and the thin hair he now had was singed. Newton unstrapped himself and began to desperately search for the dilithium crystals he needed to power his own ship. After a few hours of searching and taking things apart, Newton achingly jumped for joy when he found the fuel he needed to power his ship. Newton then made the long trek home, hiding himself in the mud and leaves to keep from getting caught by the soldiers. As Newton tried to make his way to civilization, the people of Sardana discovered that Newton's wife, Sheena, was now living in an old folks home and could provide valuable information to the whereabouts of Newton, just in case the ship they shot down was the friendly alien that was trying to warn them of Newton. The leader of the country the Rankos lived in told the military to give Sheena their top-secret brain drug that would get rid of her senility so they could find out where the horrible Newton might be. After the general had the doctor inject Sheena with it into her head, he asked her, Sheena, do you know where Newton is? She didn't respond fast enough, so he slapped the poor old withered, old, the poor old withered lady. Sheena cried and asked, where am I? What am I doing in this place? The general kept on asking her where Newton was. When she said she didn't know, he'd slap her. Sheena started crying. When he saw her, wrink when she saw her wrinkled face and hand, she went into a fit of, uh, she went into a fit, <clears throat> and collapsed, saying she didn't want, saying that she wanted to die. Sheena accidentally told the to told the general that she had only two children and that all of them had abandoned her, including Newton. The general managed to get the information out of her, and now the world knew who Jeff and Sheena were. Uh, and now the world knew who Jeff and Shirley were. The two children were captured by Sardana and asked questions to find out about Newton, where he was, and if he was still dangerous. As the hours went on, Newton made it into his town with hopeful determination to escape. It was getting close to sundown when Newton started walking down the street toward the, his home. He was happy and excited, but his little joys of laughter quickly turned into crying moans of despair when he saw soldiers and scientists pulling his pod-shaped spaceship out of his garage and putting it on a large truck. No, Newton said almost out loud. He then watched them drive, walk, drive off with it. Due to the house being guarded, Newton spent the night on a roof of a building in the city, clutching his dilithium with hopeful expectations. While Newton tried to sleep, a bum snuck up on him and tried to steal his diamonds, as the bum called them. Newton, went, Newton got into a fierce battle with the bum and accidentally put too much power in his karate kick that sent the bum tumbling over the edge of the roof and 
falling 50 stories down into an alley full of trash cans. Forgive me, Newton said, looking like a haggard, old, balding bum himself. The next day, Jeff and Sheena were... Oh, Jeff and Shirley were taken to a deten detention center. In the city, Newton spent the night in on a roof. Newton spent the night in a roof. The general started interrogating them. His assistant stopped him from slapping the answers out of them. Shirley said as she cried, Look, my dad never hurt anyone. And he never attacked Sardana. And he never killed those people in that bank or, or that dance hall. All those murders were caused by an enemy of, of his who you shot down. The general then told how Newton attacked Sardana a few decades ago and was believed to be hiding on the planet, getting ready to attack again. A few hours later, the infantry phoned the general and told him that they had found the now the now destroyed spaceship, but no one was inside it, and that the person, either Newton or the alien, who warned Sardana about Newton, was probably alive and heading for civilization. The general began to hypothesize and think that the person who apparently, who, who appeared on Nationwide TV wasn't an alien, but just an illumined man who knew about Newton, and that maybe the ship they shot down was a ship that belonged to Newton as was the ship discovered in his garage. Realizing that no bodies were found, except for a bunch of charred ashes all over the walls of the ship, made Sardana go out on a Newton hunt. As the military increased its personnel to find Newton, Newton found it harder and harder to stay hid. He realized that it was only a matter of time until he was caught and tortured to death by Sardana. In the twilight home, where Sheena was, in the twilight home where Sheena was, the depressed, sad old lady felt abandoned and suicidal. She actually became somewhat happier when the doctor told her that she had cancer and would be dead within a few months. Sheena sat down depressed, depressing in a chair by a window, with the morning sun shining on her face. She couldn't believe that her family put her in a home. Suddenly, there was a knock at the door. Newton came in all tattered, tattered and torn, dressed in a doctor's outfit. He happily ran up to Sheena, hugged her, and put her in a wheelchair to wheel her out of the building. Where are you taking me? she asked. What? asked Newton, amazed, amazed that she asked a question. Newton soon found out that Sheena was no longer senile, but was dying of cancer. Newton asked for forgiveness and said, that when she was senile, she was doing such thing, su such things that it made it impossible for him to to watch. Forgive me, Sheena begged. That's okay, Sheena. You didn't know what you were doing, but Sheena, guess what? You'll never guess it. You'll never guess what. But I now have fuel for the ship I built. We'll be able to. We'll be able to escape now. Dilithium crystals. Sheena, I have dilithium crystals. Sheena looked somewhat excited, but she realized that dilithium crystals, for their escape, came way too late. I don't want to live anymore, Newton, Sheena said, looking like a corpse. I don't want to live anymore, Newton. <laughs> no, you do, Sheena. The Federation has a cure for, the a for aging and cancer. All we have to do is get in contact with the Federation on the, out on the other side of the Sardonian sun. They might not reverse your aging process, but... Sheena, they can stop it, and then we will find a planet with a body shop. You and I will get new bodies. We will be young again and enjoy life. We will live forever and and be happy. We'll do the same with our the same thing for Shirley and Jeff. Sheena, Sheena, don't give up hope. Never give up hope. Well, let's try it she said, but lifelessly. That a girl, Newton said excitedly. And Newton quickly pushed her out to a car that a nurse was going to help drive them to a storage room where the spaceship was believed to be guarded. The nurse felt she should help Newton and Sheena because she saw the general slap Sheena around and felt like Sardana was at fault, not Newton and Sheena. The nurse saw how much Newton loved and cared for his wife, making her realize that 
he couldn't possibly be the monster that attacks Ardona. Newton felt so happy that the nurse was actually helping them escape that he gave her a crystal to pay her. When they arrived at the military base, crowds of reporters and scientists were everywhere to look at to, to get a look at the spaceship Newton had built in his garage. As Newton wheeled Shirley out of the car, he suddenly heard on the car radio that Sheena had escaped and was possibly with Newton. Bye, the Ranko said to the nurse, and Newton quickly pushed his old wife past the reporters and military personnel to get to his, cra his craft. It was a hot noon day, and the sun was causing the hungry, nervous Newton to pour sweat all over. When Newton was twenty feet from the large storage room where his ship was, people began to stop him and question him. Hey, man, where are you going? asked the soldier with a cracked, cracking teenage voice. Newton found himself being interrogated by a soldier who looked like a thirteen-year-old earth boy. Newton acted like he was deaf and signed to the soldier that he was going to see the spaceship. Gina began crying, realizing that they would never make it. Newton suddenly became excited and desperate when they opened the doors to the reporters, because there, before their eyes, was his spaceship. It was only ten feet from them. Newton saw scientists and top military officers crammed inside, examining buttons. Suddenly, so Newton felt a popping bang on his head, and he nearly and he nearly fell unconscious when the kid-like soldier struck him over the head with his baton and asked him for his identification. Newton looked up and saw a machine gun pointed in his face. That's Newton! He cur he he heard a woman scream. And and that corpse is his wife. Newton said. I'm not Newton, I'll prove it. He pulled out his wallet and threw it at the soldier. When the soldier went to grab for it, Newton pushed Sheena.